This is Fox and Friends, TV's dumbest news show. For three hours every morning, Fox's best and brightest sit on this curvy couch and deliver a bizarre mix of internet conspiracy theories. Sharia law is now changing everything. General absurdity. Nickelodeon is pushing a global warming agenda. And whatever the hell is going on here. Brian, come here. Come here, Brian. It's the Fox show that's so bad, you can't help but laugh at it. Can we get a stick? Anybody yeah. got a stick? What a bunch of dopes. <laughs> it's all a lot of fun or at least it used to be. Because now, these three geniuses are some of President Trump's most trusted advisors. Fox and Friends in the morning, they're very honorable people. That's not coming from me, that's coming from Trump, who recently called Fox and Friends one of the most influential shows in news. And the scary thing is, he's not wrong. Right now I'm getting my daily intelligence briefing. Oh, uh, from who? From you guys. <laughs> To truly understand the magic of Fox and Friends, you need to watch it every single day. But my therapist says I'm not allowed to do that anymore, so I got someone who is. Did you know there's seven days of Fox and Friends? A lot of people think that it's only five days. No, there's a weekend edition too. It's a lot. It's a lot of Fox and Friends. This is Matt Gertz. He's a research fellow at a progressive media watchdog group called Media Matters. Full disclosure, he also used to be my boss, so. Well, this is awkward. On the morning of October 10th, 2017, Gertz noticed something weird happening. Trump tweeted this at eight o'clock in the morning, praising a book by a little known conservative author seemingly out of nowhere. So I thought that was weird. One of my colleagues pointed out to me that the author had actually been on Fox and Friends earlier that morning. His colleague was right. Trump seemed to be responding to a Fox and Friends segment about the book that had aired that morning. So I looked at all of the tweets from that morning. I had pretty good matches. Fox and Friends talked about the NFL protests. Three minutes later, Trump tweeted about the NFL protests. Fox and Friends criticized Democrats over immigration. Trump tweeted about Democrats and immigration. And I said, well, damn. He's watching the show and tweeting about what he sees. Gertz started tracking every time a Fox and Friends segment lined up with a Trump tweet, and he found a ton of examples. Fox and Friends goes after Andrew McCabe, so does Trump. Fox and Friends talks about protests in Iran, so does Trump. Fox and Friends talks about Trump's mental fitness, and yeah, the list goes on and on. Sometimes Trump copies language directly from what he sees on screen, quoting Fox and Friends Chiron's verbatim. Other times, he tags Fox and Friends in his tweet. I counted over 50 examples of him doing this since his inauguration, because I need a hobby. If you look at the frequency of Trump's tweets in 2017, there's a spike between six o'clock and nine o'clock AM, which is Fox and Friends' time slot. And Fox and Friends has noticed too. They now casually joke about the president watching them live. But I asked the president to blink the lights on and off if he was watching. And because they know he's watching, Fox and Friends has evolved from a show that talks about Trump to a show that talks to Trump, actively trying to influence his behavior. A Vox study of 17 months of Fox and Friends transcripts found that after the election, sentences aimed at instructing or advising Trump spiked by more than 50%. I think the next thing the president should do is start doing some uh, infrastructure. That same study found that the show was using more language aimed at changing the president's behavior. Phrases like, we need to, we are going, and we have got. What does the president need to do if he's listening this morning to change the narrative? Jesus, how is this even real? Okay, power through. You saw this feedback loop in full effect during the debate over the recent FISA bill. In early January, Republicans were widely in support of reauthorizing a sweeping government surveillance measure, and the White House had publicly come out in support of it. But on January 11th, Fox and Friends ran this segment, warning that the bill could be used to spy on Trump officials. At one point during the segment, uh, Andrew Napolitano turns to the camera and says, Mr. President, this is not the way to go. You can probably guess what happens next. Trump sends a tweet criticizing the bill, literally quoting the caption of the Fox and Friends segment. Republicans on the Hill spend several hours panicking. It is a bit of a confusing morning, to say the least. And two hours later, Trump backtracks, saying he still supports the bill. When asked if Fox and Friends got to Trump, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders decides to make fun of CNN instead. I'm sure you're disappointed he's not watching CNN. Oh! <laughs> 
All of this has given Fox and Friends incredible power to hijack the news cycle, to talk about sideshows that would otherwise never escape the Fox News bubble. What you have is Fox and Friends doing stories, the president tweeting about what he's seeing, and the rest of the media going, well, the president just tweeted this bizarre thing. Now we need to talk about this. Trump watches a dumb segment about missing FBI texts, tweets about it, and it becomes the top story of the day. Trump watches a dumb segment about the British spying on him, repeats the claim in public, and sparks an international crisis. That was a statement made by a very talented lawyer on Fox. That's a lot of power in the hands of a show that's known for getting things wrong. A show that peddles wild internet conspiracy theories. Secret society, the missing text, it all adds up. Embraces paranoid fear mongering. What, will annihilate North Korea after we're dead? Yeah, I mean, I mean we have to do something now. And launches smear campaigns against Trump's political opponents. Bob Mueller, we now know, is totally conflicted. Jim Comey is totally conflicted. It is a carnival of chaos. These are not the people that you want uh, doing the show that the President of the United States is watching every morning. Unfortunately, we don't have much of a choice. Fox and Friends has spent years being treated like a big joke. But thanks to Trump, these three might be the ones who get the last laugh. While we were shooting this episode, Fox & Friends posted a job opening for a head writer. They're looking for somebody with a passion for current events and accuracy. So it's been fun, Vox, but it's time for me to follow my dreams.